Top aide in the Trump White House has resigned following allegations from his two ex-wives that he physically abused them. Staff Secretary Rob Porter denies the accusations. Porter's first wife, Colby Holderness, shared the photos of what her face looked like after Porter allegedly punched her while on vacation. His second wife, Jennifer Willoughby, said she became aware of his temper shortly after they got married. In a blog post last year, she describes her experience, a staffer, for off script, read part of that post out loud for us today. The first time he called me a f was on our honeymoon. I found out years later he had kicked his first wife on theirs. A month later, he physically prevented me from leaving the house. Two months after that, I filed a protective order with the police because he punched in the glass on our front door while I was locked inside. We bought a house to make up for it. Just after our one-year anniversary, he pulled me, naked and dripping, from the shower to yell at me. This was a big job, as Staff Secretary Porter would handle all of the papers that end up on the president's desk, including classified information. Chief of Staff John Kelly initially called Porter a man of integrity. But later, he said he was shocked by the new allegations, even though the FBI had shared accusations against Porter with the White House back in November. Today, the deputy press secretary addressed the situation. The allegations against Rob Porter are serious and deeply troubling. He did deny them. The uh, emerging reports were not uh, reflective of the individual who we had come to know. And while this story takes place in the national spotlight, there are many, many victims of domestic abuse and violence who suffer in silence. With me today is Cindy Southworth. She's the executive vice president of the National Network to End Domestic Violence. Let's talk about this. You've been following the story. What's your yes. take? Thanks for having me on. Mm -hmm. I just think about every single victim that's watching us tonight who's living with this day in and day out, horrific abuse, and then watching these victims get vilified in the media. People are accusing them of all sorts of motivations, and then they wonder why don't victims tell their stories or why do they stay, why don't they leave? And this is what happens when you talk about what's happened in your life. Yeah, and might not some women think, you know, I'm here suffering in, in, in silence, but now I see it's also happening at that level. I'm not alone, mate. Absolutely, it's both both ways. I think, you know, we know that one in four women will be abused by an intimate partner, physically assaulted at some point in her lifetime. So this cuts across every sector, race, religion, faith, education, job, you name it, and anyone can be a victim. What do you make of the fact that uh, the FBI back in November, you know, made these allegations known, you know, to uh, Chief of Staff, you know, Kelly and others, and uh, apparently stayed in his job. They, they were still, you know, singing his praises. I find it very disturbing. It sends a message that we can ignore victims of domestic violence, that this behavior is allowed, it's condoned, it's not going to be condemned. And I think at, it basically tells victims, we don't believe you, or at worst, we're actually going to attack and accuse you. But it's definitely not holding offenders accountable for their actions. Yeah, we, we've seen instances where bad things happen, you know, to women who are abused. It escalates. It becomes other things, even with protective uh, orders out there. Let me ask you this. What's your message to women out there right now tonight who may be going through this type situation? If you're situation? living through this, please reach out for help. Call a hotline. Call your local program. Talk to a friend. Keep, we're here for you, and we believe you, we will not ignore you, and it's not your fault. Who can guarantee their safety, though? That is the problem, that nobody can guarantee their safety except the offender, because even a protection order is not a bulletproof you know, glass. It does not put a bubble around the victim. Sometimes leaving is the most dangerous time for victims. I know of some places where you can go and they will protect your privacy. They won't even tell people you're yes. there. Are there enough of those places? There are not. There's about 2,500 domestic violence programs around the country, and they are turning people away. Our national census, we find that in one single 24-hour period, over 12,000 adults and children are turned away. So we need funding, we need more funding, and we need the government not to shut down so those shelters don't shut okay, down. Okay, but I gotta give my viewers some hope. So if you're sitting at home right now, where, where do you go online to find out where you can go to protect yourself and your children yep. if need be tonight? You can go to nnedv.org or thehotline.org and get information, reach out, but do not do it from a computer or a phone. You think your abuser's monitoring. So do it from a safer computer or a safer phone. And again, what's that link again? Where are we going? nnedv.org or thehotline.org. All right, we'll make sure we put that on the website. Thank you very much for Thank coming you in. Thank you so much. Important information.